a tall humanoid figure wearing a white cloak. Yo, what's going on? It's someone that's no one, and welcome back to today's report. Today's report is coming from Disregard Everything I Say off Psychonaut Wiki. When this happened, May 8, 2010, the drugs used were salvia and cannabis at a dose of about a bull's worth. The route administration is smoked, gender, male, weight, 61 kilograms are 135 pounds, age, 21, prior experience, a regular cannabis smoker, psilocybin mushrooms, dextromethorphan, and diphenhydramine, and the setting is at a friend's house. So in this report, we have a group salvia smoke sesh, a variety of the effects are presented, and it's a pretty interesting trip as well. So let's waste no time, I think you guys are going to like it, and without further ado, let's dive right into it. A little more than three years ago, I was hanging out with some friends, and the topic of salvia came up. A couple of my friends, who were younger than me, had smoked it before. At the time, I had been smoking cannabis regularly for two years, and had experience with psilocybin mushrooms, dextromethorphan, and diphenhydramine. I knew that salvia was much more intense than almost any other substance, but I had to see it for myself. One friend's, friend B, description of his trip made me decide to buy some. He said every time he laughed, his head felt like it was made of pieces of Lego, which were falling apart. This intrigued me. We went to our local head shop, and I purchased one gram of 20x salvia devonorum. It came in a plastic Ziploc bag with a sticker label on it and the stuff looked like crushed spider legs. The girl behind the counter gave her mandatory spiel about using it in a safe environment, with a trip sitter, etc. But as you will read later, we didn't exactly follow her instructions. After procuring the salvia, the four of us headed to our friend's house nearby. We'll call him Friend A. Our biggest problem, Friend A's mother was an addictions counselor, and wouldn't be pleased with us smoking dissociatives in her basement. Thankfully, via some sort of kismet, she had plans to go see a movie. So we sat on the couch and packed a bowl of salvia, mixed with a bit of weed, into a bong while we waited for her to leave. Soon enough, we heard the front door open and her car pulled out of the driveway. We were good to go. Since I'd paid for the salvia, I had dibs on the first bowl. I pulled slowly and deeply, making sure to burn the whole bowl. My friend stared with bated breath. I held the smoke in for about five seconds, then exhaled, which elicited gasp of dismay from two friends. You're supposed to hold it in, man. Now it probably won't work, they advised. However, within a few seconds, I could see things beginning to change. My friend's faces looked like some kind of blurry plasticine. I sunk into the couch and clutched its armrest with anticipation. They could see my expression changing quickly and remarked that I was obviously starting to trip. I looked at the TV across the room and was shocked that I could see the entire TV. It was like I could see all six sides of the TV unfolded before me, including its wiry innards. My mouth gaped as I took all of this in. Friend C, a sister, abruptly tried to grab a sweater I had been sitting on. When I felt the tug under me, I looked down. The space between the sweater and the couch was a void, a deep black void that wanted to suck me in. I clutched the sweater into my arms and tried to stretch it back over the void. I need this, I hissed. She laughed awkwardly and remarked that she was cold, but didn't try to take the sweater. And then suddenly, I heard a familiar sound, like the slamming of wood and metal, but I couldn't understand it. Then, from out of the six-dimensional TV, came a woman's voice. It shouted friend A's name, and I saw my friends reel with terror. I realized that was not a hallucination. My friend's addiction counselor mom came home. Fuck, what's she doing home so early? Friend A remarked. Then I stupidly decided to try to speak. But she can't yet. I'm on the, the thing. Um, salvia. I mumbled flatly. I heard the basement door open. Shut up. Don't say a word. Fuck, man. Friend B hissed. I tried to process this. But I'm Salvia, I retorted. Upon hearing her footsteps and voice in the basement, it clicked in my head 
that speaking was not going to help me. I continued staring at the TV, which was off the whole time. Friend A's mother sniffed the air. It smells down here. Have you been smoking in here, A? Eh? Waves of trepidation. Every word she said seemed to come out of the TV, although she was actually behind me. Thankfully, A had not smoked yet and had prepared an excuse. No, I was burning incense. I mean, that's obviously not the smell of cigarettes or anything, right? A stroke of genius. How could she know what salvia smelled like? His mother glanced us all over. I continued staring into the morphing TV, refusing to make eye contact. After a few uncomfortable moments, she remarked that she had forgotten her wallet and was now late for her movie. She hurriedly left the house and we all sighed in relief. My visuals started to subside. We waited for a few minutes to calm down, then packed another bowl. This time it was friend C's turn. At 16, she was the youngest of us all, and I don't think she had experience with anything other than cannabis and alcohol. Therefore, we packed her a comparatively smaller bowl. Having seen my mistake, she knew to hold the smoke in until the effect started. Within seconds of smoking, I saw her eyes well with tears and an uncomfortable grin spread across her face. She laid back in her seat and put her hands in the air as if she was on a roller coaster. Soon, she was laughing so hard she was crying. It sounded like she was trying to speak but could not stop laughing. She was in complete hysterics. We all watched and laughed along with her as she screamed with laughter. Within a few minutes, she was wiping the tears from her face and explaining that she actually was on a roller coaster and ice cream cones were the passengers. She couldn't elaborate more than that. This seemed like a very lighthearted and fun trip compared to what I had seen with the TV. In light of her hilarious trip, I decided I would retry. I packed the bottom of the bong with weed, then filled the rest with salvia and sprinkled a bit more weed on top for flavor. Looking back, I think I put about one-fourth of the gram into that bowl. I cooked the bowl much faster this time since I was aware of just how short the bioavailability really is. I held the acid smoke in and saw the same plasticine face effect as my friends looked at me, but this time there was a very strong rush. It felt ominous and there seemed to be a whoosh sound, like when one puts one's ear to a seashell. I could tell this was going to be intense, and once again, I laid back and clutched the couch. Then, blackness. I opened my eyes to see that I was standing on the edge of a plateau. The ground beneath me was powdery and orange-red, like Mars. The clear sky was a similar color, but more reddish. There were wisps of white clouds, but not many. I took a few steps toward the edge of the cliff. Far below me was a vast orange desert badlands sort of area. The ground was cracked and dry. I heard the whoosh again and looked upward. Several creatures were flying overhead. They were shaped like manta rays with very long dragon-like tails. They were dark shades of purple and blue with bumpy, leathery scales. I spoke their name, which to the best of my recollection was something like Quizocetolix. No, not Quetzalcoatl. It was as though I had seen these creatures before. They did not seem dangerous, but they are worthy of my respect and appreciation. I made my way down the steep cliff face and into the badlands. With the creatures flying overhead and a vast plain before me, I walked for what felt like two years. I felt myself age and grow weary, but I did not stop walking. Eventually, I reached a small white hut. It was somewhat like a mushroom, fat, short, and round with a wider dome-like roof. It had a rounded entrance with no door and seemed very welcoming. I don't recall entering the hut, but my next memory is inside the hut. Everything was stark white. When I looked around, I could not see an exit, despite the fact the entrance had no door. Behind a white rectangular counter stood a tall humanoid figure wearing a white cloak. It was like a burqa. I could not see the figure's face. I slowly approached the counter. The figure finally acknowledged my presence with a laugh. So, what do you think? Its voice was neither masculine nor feminine. It simply spoke English words in their truest form 
with no special voicing or accent. Despite that, it seemed to have an echo. I stammered, What? Think of what? It laughed very loudly and mockingly. The salvia. What do you think of salvia? I reeled with confusion. Salvia? This word seemed so familiar. I tried to recall how I had gone into this room and briefly remembered smoking with other humans in a small room. I cannot remember my friends' names or faces. The humanoid was aware of my confusion. It seemed to thrive on it. I gained momentary confidence and tried to voice my opinion on salvia, but I could not use my mouth. The cloak figure focused on me even more intently and began laughing louder and louder, and knew I could not speak. I felt a physical barrier between my words and my mouth. I raised my hands to the corner of my mouth and pushed forward. As I moved the block-like barrier, I heard my answer escape from my mouth. No! The creature's eyes widened and I saw the hut room rocket away from me. When I pushed the barrier away from myself, I had seemingly pushed myself into the realm of that block. I looked at the block I had pushed off of my mouth. It was labeled with the word, no, the same word I had been trying to say. It was about arm length away from me, and when I looked around, I could see other similar blocks with different words on them. It slowly started to move away, and it appeared to be a wall of keyboard-like blocks, all with different words or ideas. I started to float backward, faster and faster. It wasn't a wall, it was a floor. No, it wasn't a floor, it was a plane. My mind reeled as I tried to take in all the ideas of these blocks. As I floated away, I saw the full scope of the block wall. It was a planet. I screamed. A planet made of thoughts, ideas, and words, all arranged like a keyboard. I was still floating away from the planet into the blackness of space. No, 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 no! I continued to scream endlessly to no avail. Then it occurred to me, if I pushed the planet away by saying the wrong word, perhaps I could get back to it by answering the white humanoid's question properly. I shouted out loud my answer to its question. I could not hear my own voice, but I felt my mouth moving. Then I felt the gravity of the planet pull me back in, and I heard that familiar whoosh. I had reconnected to the ideas that made up my reality. For a few brief moments, I felt as though I was waking from a deep sleep. There was a blur of colors as my eyes opened, and the basement slowly started to fade in. I recognized the people sitting around me. They all looked very sedate. I turned to friend B, who was sitting next to me on the couch. His eyes were half open, and I could tell he was still under the effects of salvia. It occurred to me that I had been speaking while tripping, but I couldn't remember those magic words I had said to bring me back to reality. I asked my friends, still somewhat sword and hazy, what did I just say? They turned to me abruptly. Apparently, they hadn't realized I was sober again. When I was tripping, I was speaking. What did I say? Friend A replied, Well, you spent most of the time screaming your fucking head off, which wasn't cool. His disapproval seemed inane since I didn't even know I was on the same planet as him, let alone in the same room. But at the end, you looked really serious and shouted, Oh God, what is this? I don't even... I broke out in laughter. Those were my magic words? Well, it did seem to sum up the Savi experience pretty well, and I suppose it appeased whatever part of my mind was represented by that cloaked figure. I asked my two male friends what they saw since I already knew what C had seen because she tripped before me. Friend A told me that all the walls seemed to peel back to reveal a layer of streaming numbers beneath. I suppose you could compare that to the Matrix. Friend B, despite being the largest of us all, had a particularly low tolerance for most drugs I had seen him take. He would regularly trip out when smoking weed, in his own words. This low tolerance seemed to factor into his salvia experience because he said it was very intense, but also could not remember anything. After stepping outside for some fresh air, I managed to slowly recall my entire trip and recounted it to my friends. They seemed hesitant to believe that I could have seen so much in only 10 minutes, but I reminded them that I had smoked much more than they had. 
All in all, despite the overwhelming intensity and the ensuing HPPD which I have been living with, I look back on this trip fondly. It was certainly a breakthrough and the most intense trip I have experienced to date. The fact that it felt like two years in the span of 10 minutes is mind-boggling. I tried to smoke the rest of the salvia a few weeks later with a friend, but neither of us experienced anything. I would consider doing salvia again, but only in a much more controlled environment and with sober trip sitters. So back with another salvia report, and this one is pretty unique at that. But before we start to break down this report, let's break down salvia a bit so we can better understand what goes down on a trip. So first off, salvia is considered to be the strongest naturally growing psychedelic plant. And I use the term psychedelic lightly here because salvia doesn't act upon the same receptors as traditional psychedelics. But because of the nature of the experience, it is often regarded that it has psychedelic properties along with having dissociative and delirious properties. And based off the reports thus far, it really doesn't seem to be limited in any regards. It seems to be on the same level as a DMT trip. The main difference though between them seems to be the type of energy and direction you go. With salvia, it tends to lie on the dark side, often leading people to disturbing or just generally uncomfortable states of being. It isn't uncommon to hear people turning into inanimate objects, such as becoming a fridge or a conveyor belt. It will depend on the strength of the trip, of course. There will be distortions to gravity, you'll have memory suppression of some sort, you may have synesthesia, closed eye visuals, and more. Now the experience only lasts about 15 minutes, about the same time as a DMT trip, but the strength of the experience can easily lead one to believe it's much longer than that. Two years worth, according to disregard everything I say. The 20x also seem to be more than enough for this group too. Often these days, you can find extracts in head shops, but it's still possible to receive effects through smoking the plant itself. The active dose is only a couple hundred micrograms. But beyond the experience, salvia has shown not to be health-threatening or addictive. In fact, I'm sure many of you can see the desire to decrease the use of salvia, not increase. But it is interesting to see that it did induce HPBD according to disregard everything I say. I do wonder if cannabis would further induce that for him. And going through such an intense experience, a trip sitter would be wise to have. Because the thing is with salvia, you don't necessarily get forward as you would with DMT. It's possible to continue moving around, looking like a dumbass probably, so you don't want to accidentally end up on salvia by yourself and walking into the street or whatever. But looking further into this report, I think we get a clear look of the things that are possible on salvia. I mainly want to point out the unique entities and settings he experienced in the second run, which we can see salvia for the most part has a pretty weird and otherworldly nature. The figure with the white cloak somewhat showed the sinister side of it, but partially that is perspective. The laughing on Salvia starts off normal, but oftentimes it can spiral into laughter of like evil and impending doom. But at the same time, I think Salvia may try to show you things and teach you things. We can somewhat see this when he analyzed the TV in his first experience, and he was just able to better see how it was generally put together. But let's bring up a past report and see how that compares. So I want to bring up Panic at the Duplex, which is our last salvia report by Eusebius, where he also happened to take the 20x extract, but probably at a much higher dose. Granted though in this report, the cannabis most likely strengthened the effects of the trip here, but Eusebius actually had a pretty similar experience. It was probably a bit more intense and fast by the way he described it, but there are some similarities that stick out. One that it was started off by a series of laughs and giggles. The second being, he felt like he was unable to breathe or speak. While on the outside, his trip sitter claimed that he was shouting things like help me. But for afterwards, the two took their experiences in very differently. Disregard everything I say, seem to appreciate and be somewhat grateful of it. While Eusebius seemed to somewhat dread it, and seemed to be heavily impacted by the sheer power of it. 
which at the end of the day, I do believe that perspective plays a big role here. There is a lot of ways to take in a trip and see what it may have been, but it also depends on who you are and just how that experience sits with you. But we're going to end it there for today. If you guys did like this salvia report, let me know and we can get more salvia reports in. If you guys did like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow the socials, it's been someone that's no one, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.